Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, well, I'm stuck in traffic, the whole living by faith thing. And, uh, you know, what, what, do you, what do you do with your life? I mean, your decision, there's, there's a lot of freedom on there. And it's amazing how a lot of people are preaching about that. And I, and I don't want to just pick on Brother Ryan Hicks about that thing. But, uh, you know, pray, look for guidance, get some advice from people. That's all pretty conventional stuff. If you actually paid attention to one of my previous videos, I, I talk about that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in the Old Testament stuff, a lot of wisdom in the Torah, whether or not, you know, you choose to accept it or not, that, that's kind of your choice, isn't it? But the situation of, of rejecting formal education in modern society because there's bad stuff going on in the formal education, it's, a, it's an easy choice to make if you're going to be lazy and not try to get ahead in life. And I have, uh, I've been lazy, I, I sleep in a lot, and I stay up late on YouTube and the internet, and I, I sleep in, but then, again, I don't consider a day complete unless I've made some money, and I strive toward sufficient resources and freedom in my life so that not only do I have things, but I have enough that I can give with significance, and we hear about the parable of the widow's mite, right? I mean, anybody who's read a Bible should be reasonably familiar with that, and uh, different, some different interpretations of it, but generally speaking, the story goes, is uh, 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 Jesus and some of the early apostles are, are at the Jewish temple, they're paying their respects, watching people collect the money for something and somebody scoffs at the poor person who uh, donated very little. And Jesus is talking about, well, spiritually she was actually giving a lot. She was giving everything. So spiritually she's giving a lot. Well, yeah, that's true, spiritually. But the reality is the rich man, yeah, we do expect him to give something because obviously within that society he's benefited. So the, he's, he's meeting the expectation. He's benefited within that society. That society's taking care of him. He's kicking down. And it is necessary for the rich guy in those types of circumstances. It is necessary for him to publicly demonstrate that he's giving. It, it is. And that's one of the reasons in the past when I was financially successful in life, I would go to a church and I knew I knew there were a lot of people there who considered themselves very devout people. And for some strange reason, they're going to church to get something. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like a little story I would tell. If Jesus knocked on your doorstep and was, uh, you know, you figured out, hey, guess what, you're dealing with Jesus. Would you ask him for something or would you offer something? And if you were to ask something or offer something, would, would, you know, how fair do you want to be about that? I mean, how, uh, where, where, where is it to say, hey, guess what? I got this supernatural connection. Uh, you want to tell you Alibaba and the Three Wishes or something? Or would you, or would you give them something? You know, what, what, what would you do? Uh, interesting question. I don't, but there's a lot of people who go to church for, you know, some sort of a free handout. Uh, in the Masonic organizations, they, uh, they have one of the requirements for membership is uh, not, not to join for mercenary purposes, not to join just to personally get ahead, apparently. Uh, I, I don't personally use mercenary as a bad term, so they apparently did. And that's, that's an issue of semantics. Uh, I, I don't think the mercenary is uh, necessarily the, the bad guy of um, history. So, um, but there's, there's issues with that, I guess. So, the thing is, in, in living by faith, you know, are you giving something? Are you get, getting something? And there's a lot of people who want to treat somebody who lives by faith as, hey, I've read the Bible too, and now that I've got your number, I'm going to manipulate your faith, okay? There's a lot of people who will play that game. And one of the ways that you can make sure that you're keeping track of where you need to be on things is to keep it in mind that if you don't have anything, you can't give anything. And I do watch what other people give. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I do. I've been involved in a couple little charitable things and uh, 
helping raise money for a couple of things and and I've been very scrupulous about that in that uh, I I would not pull expenses out of the out of the deal okay I, I don't live real large uh, uh, anyway and when I've been in charge of some of those things I would I wouldn't pull personal money out of it so when I started to see people who had a lot and wouldn't give much I'm like you know what Jesus was talking about the rich guy who had a lot and was given something and Jesus was spiritually judging the uh, the widow to be spiritually superior and when somebody is uh, not having anything you know we, we can talk spiritually about that but the reality is we live in a society 2,000 years later where uh, I think we have a right to participation in the political structure in this country. We have as much a right as anybody to participate in the political structure in this country, and it takes money. It also takes having a lifestyle with sufficient personal freedom to get involved with things. The cathedrals of Europe, most of them were built with volunteer labor, okay? A lot of them were built when there was no system there was no system of public welfare for the unemployed or displaced peasants except for contributions which went to the churches. And then the churches employed a lot of people to basically, <laughs> if somebody volunteered to help construct a cathedral, they still got fed. They still got to live in a little settlement at the, at the place. They still got fed. And the priesthood was still raising money and giving official recognition to the kings who had contributed money to get the cathedrals built. And they received a lot of official recognition in that, in those kingdoms which had that. Uh, the fiefdoms, which had uh, helped pay the bills for moral authority, ended up with some moral authority for their kings. And that was considered a level of corruption to the Catholic uh, to a lot of critics of the Catholic Church. And, you know, with some people, there's no winning their favor entirely. I mean, it's not going to happen. But if you're living by faith and not living uh, uh, to some degree with mentorship, with somebody who's been successful living by faith, then you're going to be shortchanged in the whole game, okay? You're going to be shortchanged in the whole game and you're not going to be capable of helping other people out who are, 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 you know, they need the hand up. And I'm not talking about living a lifestyle of just doing handouts all the time. People want to live a lifestyle of handouts. Uh, there's two ways that works. One, they're either going to come down with Robin Hood syndrome and be handing out other people's resources all the time. Or they're going to end up with nothing for themselves. That there's two ways it goes, okay? And one of the reasons I mentioned in another video on liberal arts and liberal, liberal ideology gets promoted among the uh, upper middle class through the education system is because you just don't want the people to be cruel and greedy all the time. Well, there's a difference between being cruel and greedy and being suicidal. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a cruel and greedy person. And I, I make sure I'm not cheating people when I do business with people, okay? But there's a point when I'm, I'm not going to be generous to the point of absurdity with it, okay? And I, But I want a reputation among people that if they do business with me, I'm, I'm offering a good, fair deal of whatever goods and services I provide. I'm, I'm not there to gouge anybody. Uh, on the flip side, I'm, you know, I'm not there to be the fool either. And... Uh, somebody wants to play me for the fool, uh, I'll play right back, man. I, 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 I know how to play, and I do, okay, so, uh, well, I got in over 10 minutes there.